Welcome to the Montauk Point Lighthouse, the fourth oldest lighthouse in all of the United States of America. This was built in 1796 and it was commissioned by President George Washington himself. So uh, this is a very, very old lighthouse and it is the oldest lighthouse in all of New York State. Now lighthouses are very well known all around New England. So here we're looking at one of the most iconic ones with also its iconic brown stripe right in the middle. Let's explore the Montauk Lighthouse. Now Montauk, as I mentioned in the past two videos where I got cut off a little bit prematurely due to bad service, is on the very point, very tip of Long Island. Long Island is the 11th largest island in the contiguous United States as the most populous states in Costa County in So we're going to go a little bit more. So it's been it's been a wild ride. Uh, this area and a person who wants to disconnect this might be a good place to do so <laughs> because you're kind of forced to do it uh, now and then you have to pay an additional six dollars for admission and those are located earlier So the interesting thing is, the architect who built this was J John McComb Jr. John McComb Jr., this was one of his earliest projects. He went on to design the New York City City Hall. Another video soon. But let me show you first the bluffs we were currently located. Well, let me zoom. this part three of the Montauk series the basis for the show stranger things and here we have more of the Montauk now ocean and on the other side we're seeing the Long Island Sound which is further down this way so actually all the way down there is the Long Island Sound and on a clear day Connecticut is there, all on the horizon. Let's get closer to the lighthouse. You love to live in the lighthouse. Some of them are becoming Airbnbs. So here is a ship. It's called Commission in 1943 for a ship. And it was part of the Atlantic Fleet. And the home port was in Charleston, South Carolina. So here's the bell of the ship. So here's the light station. Let's go this way. Another lookout point down there. And it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Look how huge it is. I don't think I'm supposed to go this way. It says noise hazard. Oh yeah, so we can go right behind. So here it is. So noise hazard. <laughs> so don't go there unless if you want to lose your hearing. And here it is, the lighthouse at the very end of New York State, the very end of Long Island built in 1796 so this is as old as the country of the United States of America which was declared in 1776 but really became a country in the late 1780s early 1790s and yeah there's a very big foghorn over here oh wow look at magnificent views
350 feet tall. This is the view that we can see from the very top. Unfortunately, it is closed due to coronavirus, due to the pandemic. And this is how it looks like from above. However, one interesting thing is, this used to be 300 feet away from the shore. 300 feet is pretty significantly, eh, pretty significantly back, but it now is only a mere 100 feet next to the water. Now here we have it says, warning, and here are the fog horns. So we gotta watch out. I'm not sure if the fog horns will sound. I one time was in the past. Pretty sight. And here is this monument that might be dedicated to a very special person. I'm not necessarily sure if fog horns will sound. Should put more signs. Is it still in use? No. And this is in remembrance of those lost at sea while fishing these waters. And right fishing right down there. So there's a lot of the whalers. This area was whale central. was the birthplace of R.H. Macy and he was in the island where it was known for the best whalers in the entire world and that's thus the the tribute however, however here on the distance oh, there's a lot of things here uh, it was supposed to be 300 feet away it was 300 feet back. Now, take off the mask, I'm pretty far away from people. Unfortunately, in a massive hurricane that flew, rammed right into Long Island. One of the worst hurricanes in history at that point. Superstorm Sandy would be even larger later on in 2011 if i remember correctly 1962 that nor'easter tore through montauk even made montauk this beautiful ismit uh this beautiful hamlet that sticks out into the atlantic ocean it made it temporarily into an island the shore was devastated this bluff was crumbling away one year after the other a woman who lived far further down at rocky point she mentioned she was devastated that she lost two-thirds of her property she was four foot ten and very high spirits she wanted to do something to save this lighthouse and in turn save a lot of the houses all along the montauk shore and the sound is cutting in and out oh i'm so sorry everyone it is bad service here. The woman who came here a little four foot ten at the age of 61 was Georgina Reed. And Georgina Reed made this impressive system of terraces. She herself with a team of volunteers fortified this bluff. This bluff, if it weren't here, if it weren't for Georgina Reed, the lighthouse would have been already in the ocean. We wouldn't have any more iconic Montauk Lighthouse. The U.S. Army actually in the 1960s wanted to replace this lighthouse with a huge steel lighthouse built even further inland. However, there was another moment in the history, and let's see if we can go downstairs. Sure. 
Let's see what's in here. Oh, it's a little museum exhibit. And we see a sign for Jaws, because Jaws actually took place nearby. And we can't really see through here. Oh, wow, this is a magnificent sight over here. Wow, okay. So I think this is a good place as any. 1839, this, a ship came. It was, it was a illegal smuggling ship from Cuba on behalf of the Spanish. This ship wasn't actually manned by the Spanish or the Cubans anymore, the Criollos. It was manned by Africans. People from the area of current day Sierra Leone. The Africans actually end up taking control of the ship in a rebellion where they actually end up Sorry, lots of people walking behind me. Um, and yeah, lots of people, and I gotta put on the mask. In this ship, it was the name, the name of the ship was La Amistad. And they were illegally smuggled out in modern day Sierra Leone and attended to brought over to the sugar plantations in Cuba they decided to revolt and they took control of the ship and left two Spanish sailors alive because they used them to steer them back to Africa. How driving. They knew that they had very precious cargo on that ship. And that cargo, unfortunately, being actual human people. And they said, yeah, 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 we're, we're sailing to Africa. And every morning, every day, they would sail eastward. So they would know, the Africans would know they were sailing towards the sun, which they intuitively knew it was their homeland. And in stormy days, they would sail the other way. And they end up making their way over here to America. The Spaniards actually wanted to sail to Cuba or to Mexico. Coming here to Montauk. A free place, the Spaniards decided, okay, let's just go further up north. Let's go to Montauk to make them happy. However, they were meant, met with very friendly people. New York. Trading. It was outlawed just a few years earlier in 1829, 1827. But slave holding was still legal. And the came an American ship came over here, approached La Amistad. The they decided to a few of them decided to go right. One of them was the man by the name of Sinke, and Sinke was a chief who was on the run, and he was and he decided to do the best with his chances to swim ashore. However, he away, and he went, disappeared for for a few minutes, and then came back up. The USS ship decided to chase them down, and for 40 minutes they were going crisscrossing all around the area trying to find Sinke. And they finally captured him and the other Africans and sailed right. They were in prison because apparently they were slaves, but at the same time, 
they were illegal slaves. It was a completely illegal operation. Slavery wasn't even allowed. No one was allowed to import slaves here to America. Thus, they weren't actually legal. Not even legal in the Spanish context. So this lighthouse dwelling was built in 1860. Let's go to see the other view, and I think we'll call it a day. Let's go downstairs. Now look had interests. The two they said that the ship that found them their own property. They said that they sailed into the US. It was an illegal operation. Now it's their property. They wanted to keep them as slaves. At that time who were against slavery were called abolitionists. And they were also known as a pretty extreme group. It wasn't popular yet in America. And then they came to the defense and made the Amistad Committee. Came to the defense of the Africans and sued the state of Connecticut. However, the case was escalated to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court of Courts. That's the well, here's a beautiful garden. So I think uh, I'm running out of service. But here's a little lookout. And we'll see this lookout over here. Oh, wait. So beautiful view. Only until the man steps away. A gorgeous view. Let's go down here. So this is a sentry post. It's so cool that they kept this. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful with the seagulls and everything. And here's the lighthouse one more time. So to briefly finish my story, how did the Africans get out? What ended up happening to them? Well, La Amistad, the case was taken all the way to the Supreme Court. And at the Supreme Court, of freeing the Africans. America was unwilling to give them any money. The Amistad Committee put in the money, raised the money. They did a huge tour all around the country to show these Africans and their lives and their stories. And they went all around. A few of them even learned English, including Sinke. Now, a little bit about Sinke. He, one of the reasons the jury voted in favor of the Africans was because during the Supreme Court trial, 
it was very raucous and there was a lot of competing interests and it was also along a competing um, a competing debate between holding slaves and not holding slaves it's a very uh, it's a conversation a lot of people are talking about again and Sinke stood up right in the middle of the court case and he just said out loud in very broken English because remember he was from Sierra Leone he really didn't know any English he didn't even know Spanish he didn't even know any of the languages associated by nearby he only knew um, his native Mandalese I think it was called and he said give me give them free give them free he was saying give all of us freedom just let us free you know it's illegal let us free around the country and Sinke becoming a very world popular man let me show you his photo over here becoming world uh, becoming popular also becoming popular all around the world. This is a, a poster with his face, with his likeness. They end up raising the money to finally become free for good. And someone says I should uh, get a drone. 100%. I do have a drone with me and I'm tempted to fly. I need to do it outside. So there we go, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. That was the lighthouse. Oldest lighthouse in all of America. Oldest lighthouse in New York State. You get here by... But once you get to the train, you might need to rent a car or hire a car, which might be pretty expensive. So just a fair warning. You can also travel here from New York City or get on the Hepton Jitney and also hire a car to get to Montauk Point. There probably is a shuttle service or something similar to that nature. So I appreciate everyone seeing here. Yes, you can Google the story. All these live heavily uh, if you want to leave a tip you can press the gold button right down there the gold star button or if you want to become a supporter you can press the green button down there and support this page so I can keep making more videos and show you other parts all around New York City and nearby cities thank you everyone so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it the last two parts of course will be found on the videos tab I'll link them below keep being awesome and always keep on exploring have a great day everyone Stephen, yes, is the oldest in New York State and the fourth oldest in America. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.